Hi boys and girls, today we're gonna make some fun weavings out of paper. And we're not just gonna do the standard, just straight line weaving, we're gonna do some neat kind of optical illusion type weaving. So here's one I did with slanted lines, makes it kind of look like a Rubik's Cube is what some of the students were saying when I taught this. And then um, I did one with curved lines and it looks kind of like oval. So let me show you how that's done. Now I'm using black paper, but you can use whatever paper you have available to you, okay? So first, you need to fold your paper in half. So I take it, I turn it vertical, and I fold it like a card. And I make sure both sides touch. And when you're folding, you want to use both hands. I use my left hand to hold this in place, and I use my right hand to crease. Alright, so now I've got my loom. This is what I'm going to cut to weave my papers into. And for those of you who've had me before, we um, have weaved with paper before, like in your lower grades, like maybe kindergarten or first. So it's the same kind of deal. We're just cutting our loom differently. Now, you've always got to make sure that you cut on the fold. Do not cut on the open side because then you'll have like an octopus instead of a loom. So please make sure that you cut on the fold. Before you get started, you need some paper cut into strips. I cut um, my paper into one inch strips and I think that's maybe 11 inches long. So it's longer than my paper, just as long as it's not too short and it won't fit in my loom. So I cut it longer and I can trim it later. Um, so one inch thick strips. I used a paper cutter to do this but you could use scissors. So I'm gonna use this one inch strip to make a guideline on the open end of my folded paper. So here's my open end, that all. And I'm gonna put my folded paper right up here like a straight edge. And I'm gonna draw a guideline. This guideline is gonna tell me where I need to stop cutting. Just drawing it with a pencil. Sorry, I'm running into my light. So that's my guideline. There's where I ran into the light. There we go. So I want to leave a little space and I don't want to go past that line. Now for this one with the kind of Rubik's Cube look to it, you're going to draw slanted lines. I use a white crayon so you can see you can use a pencil. Alright, so before I get started with my lines, I want to establish the middle. So is this middle? Nope. Is this middle? Nope. Is this middle? Yeah, that's what all the kids would say. If it's not perfect, it's okay. Just somewhere in the middle. I don't have a ruler, so I'm not being exact. Okay, that looks pretty much it. So I'm gonna start on my guideline and I'm gonna draw a slanted line down. And then I wanna draw another slanted line beside it. Now, this one you have to be careful about. Do not draw your line way up here or that won't work. It's gotta be on the fold and don't draw it too close to the corner because your paper might rip. So start on this guideline and slant towards the fold, okay? I'll trace this so you can see a little bit better. Now we want this to be symmetrical. We want it to be the same on both sides. If I drew a line down the middle and it's the same on both sides, that's what we call symmetrical. So I'm gonna start here on the right. I'm gonna draw a slanted line on this side. See how it gets a little bit wider as I get to the fold? I want that. Again, don't go up here past this corner. It's got to be down here before the corner. And you don't want it to be on the corner. It's got to be before. I've got like a fingertip length. Sorry, my nails look terrible. Um, I've got like a fingertip length from the corner to my line. Okay. And again, this is the fold. This is the open side. That's really, really important. All right, so we've got our lines and we are ready to cut. Do not cut 
your guideline. This is your guideline that tells you where to stop. So I cut almost to the top and stop. Cut almost to the top and stop. Cut almost to the top and stop. You also want these to be pretty uniform. That guideline helps to keep them all the same length. Almost to the top and stop. Like I said, you could do this with whatever color construction paper or paper you have. You have newspaper, you could weave newspaper. You have a magazine, you could weave a magazine. It'll be kind of flimsy. Um, so that's one plus about having construction paper. It's um, a little more heavy duty. All right, so look, I've got my loom. It's already kind of got that diamond shape to it. Now I take my strips that I've already have cut and I'm gonna start to weave. When you're weaving, something's gonna go over, under, over, under, over, under, okay? So my paper's gonna go over, under my loom paper. So I'm gonna start over. This is my first piece. Sometimes kids forget this piece. This is important just like any other piece. You've got to continue to use this piece. So I'm gonna start over the first piece, lift up the second, and then go under. I'm gonna go over the third, under the fourth, over the fifth, under the sixth, and I'm gonna scooch, scooch, scooch. By the way, oh, I forgot to say, I got this idea from Art with Miss Nguyen. Okay, um, I saw this on her website, and she's got a great uh, tutorial on how to do this. I'm just taping this video for my third grade virtual students in the district. Um, so I'm not trying to take her idea, just using her awesome idea to teach to my virtual students and whoever else wants to follow along but thank you art with miss Nguyen, for putting this idea out there we appreciate it all right so i went over under over under over under if you have a pattern you know you're doing it right the second one you're going to do the opposite so what's the opposite of over under that's right <laughs> so go under the first one over the second one under the third, over the fourth, under the fifth, over the sixth, and scooch, 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 scooch. Come on, scooch. There we go. So I'm starting to see kind of a checkerboard pattern, and if you see that, you know you're doing it right as well. If you see the same thing over and over again, it's time to start over and do the opposite. Do you see that, how it's the same? It also doesn't stay in your paper very well. So when you weave, when you do the opposite, it'll stay tighter in your paper. All right, so I'm gonna go under, over, under, over, under, over, scooch, scooch, scooch. That's better, scooch, scooch, scooch. Always make sure you scoot it over so you have plenty of room for all your other pieces. Now I'm doing a kind of a rainbow pattern, but you can do whatever you want. I've got neon paper. Again, you can use whatever paper you have available. So um, here we go, let's go back to our pattern and see what to do this time in case you forgot. So over, under, over. Also you could think about it like this, black color, black color, black color. It's gonna be a pattern, it's gonna be the opposite each time. So over, under, over. Over, under, over, under. Scooch, scooch, scooch. Looking cool. All right, so we've got over, under, over. The next one is under. Under the first, over the second, under the third. Oh, also should have mentioned this earlier, but the key to making this a lot easier is to limit the number of lines that you draw in your loom. If you draw 15 lines, that's gonna be extremely hard to weave. I want you to draw the same number of lines that I did. All right, so let's see, blue, where's my blue? There you are. All right, so over, under, over, under, over. Under, over, under, over, under. Scooch, scooch, scooch. I'm gonna start over with my pink. Over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under. Gooch, gooch, gooch. Are you all getting the hang of it? Over, under, over, under, over, under, or you do black color, black color, black color, black 
color. Okay, I want that color to show over, under. As you get towards the end, it's gonna be a little bit harder to get your paper in there. But just be careful so you don't rip. If you didn't quite make your lines long enough here on the end, you could try to trim them a little bit. But that's what that guideline is good for, to show you where to stop, to make sure your lines are long enough so you have plenty of room to weave. All right, here we go. So I started over last time. I need to start under this time. Under, over. See, it gets a little bit harder to lift up towards the end. Get back down there. Scooch, scooch, scooch. I might have room for one more. Okay, so I started under the first last time. I need to go over the first this time. Over, under, let's see what happens if you skip one. That's what a lot of kids tend to do too. Now look at that, doesn't that look kind of weird? Yeah, it kind of looks like a checkerboard in some places, other places it kind of doesn't. We kind of lose our pattern. It's not the same as the rest, so don't skip any too. That's another thing that happens when you cut too many lines, you tend to skip. So don't skip any. You've got to remember to go over, under, over, under each little piece of your loom. All right, so this is under. This one's over. I'm not going to skip this time. I'm going to do it right. Getting a little tight. A little tricky. But we did it. Scooch, scooch, scooch. Okay, so now I've got all these extra stuff hanging off. I'm just going to trim that. Um, don't trim it at first. Some of my students do that and they end up with pieces that are too short. So don't trim it yet. Um, wait until you're finished. I'd rather you have too long than not enough. Now when I teach this in the classroom, I already have all my strips laid out. The kids cut their own loom. Um, but you guys at home are gonna have to cut your own strips, I'm sorry. And if you have a glue stick, you can glue down these ends. Put a little glue right there, glue it down. If you don't, it's all right. It should stick in there because we wove correctly. If you'd rather glue first and then cut, you could do that. I'm noticing some of my pieces are kind of wiggling a little bit. So that might make things easier. So now we've got our first weaving. Um, if you want to do the curved weaving, like a noose, then you just need to cut your paper in a different way. You could also cut zigzags in your paper. You could also cut wavy lines in your paper. You could do a lot of things with this project. If you want more information, you can look up um, like optical illusion weaving and you'll see a few more examples. But I'm gonna show you how to do the curved one. I've got my black paper again. I fold it like a card. I'm not folding it long and skinny. The kids call that like a hot dog, like a burrito, but I'm going to fold mine like a card. Make sure it lines up. Sometimes I cut the paper crooked and it doesn't quite line up, but that's all right. I'm going to use one of my strips for a ruler for a straight edge to show me where to stop. Remember, this is the open end. Draw that strip. Um, guideline on the open end. Okay, covered up my pencil. There it is. Hold that up. Trace, trace a line going across. Okay, find the middle. So we make this symmetrical. All right. So since I have a curved shape. I need to draw curved lines. So cut this one in the middle. Ooh. And then I'll start beside it. I'm gonna draw a curved line. I'll scoot over a little bit and draw another curved line. How many lines did I do? Just three. I'm not doing a whole bunch or it'll be very hard to weave. 
Maybe you could do, I don't know, three on each side. But don't forget to make sure you get it on the fold, to draw to the fold, and don't get it above the corner. And don't put it on the corner. I want it to be symmetrical. So I'm just gonna do two lines over here too. I'm starting out kind of small, and then it's getting wider as it gets to the fold. Trying to make it look like the other side. Okay, here's my guideline. Here's my fold. I'm gonna start cutting on the fold. Another thing I tell my kids to do, if this fits together like a V, you know you've got it on the right side. If it fits together like a diamond, that's the wrong side. Don't cut the open side, cut the folded side. Almost to the top and stop. Cut almost to the top and stop. Keep your paper folded while you cut so you cut both sides at the same time. All right, and there's my round loom. I'm ready to weave my strips in there. I think I'm just gonna do one color this time. Well, I've got a lot of orange, so I'll do some orange. Again, you start over, under, over, under, over, under. Scooch, scooch, scooch. Do the opposite. This one's over, so this next one's gonna be under the first, over the second, under the third, over the fourth, under the fifth, and scooch, scooch, scooch. Already I can see that pattern that's being formed, that checkerboard kind of look. Over, under, so this one's gonna be over too. Over, under, over, under, over, under, scooch, scooch, scooch. All right, so I started over this one. This one's gonna be under, under, over, under, over, under, over. Scooch, scooch, scooch. Started under this time. This one's gonna be over, over, under, over, under, over, under. Scooch, scooch, scooch. done and you don't have to make both of these if you just want to make one that's fine i'm just showing you a couple different options for this kind of optical illusion style weaving yeah there it's cute this one started under so this one's got to go over the first under the second Probably fit like two more pieces. Over, so I gotta start under. Make sure you don't skip one. I started under the first, so this time I'm gonna start over the first. I'm gonna go under the second, over the third. Yeah, it's just getting dark. Okay, so we're going to trim off the edges. Like I said, you could put glue down right there if you want to. And then trim off the extras. Wait to do this last. Illusion number two, weaving. 
hope you guys had fun. Hope you had learned a lot. And um, I'll see you guys soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.